Hello to all my dear lovely students. I hope you all are doing fine and must be studying well. So once again, I Ayushi Agarwal welcomes you on this amazing platform of Physics Wala in your excellence batch. Today we are going to complete the chapter, the first chapter, reproduction in organism. So far, in first three lectures, we have discussed what is reproduction. types of reproduction that is asexual and a and sexual reproduction then we have discussed asexual reproduction in details all natural propagation artificial propagation and so on today we are going to complete this chapter by understanding all the events of sexual reproduction in my last class in my last lesson i have already told you that sexual reproduction is completed in three events there are three steps to complete this phenomena that is pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization bachcho if i talk about pre fertilization then there are two events that takes place during pre fertilization that is formation of gametes and transfer of gametes formation of gamete is known as gametogenesis which we have already discussed now today we are going to start from the next event of pre fertilization that is transmission of gametes followed by fertilization events and then followed by post fertilization events but before we start with gamete transmission there is a small topic which you have to study that is sexuality in organism that which terminologies are you going to use to represent the sexuality of organism be it lower organisms or higher organisms yes or no so first we are going to discuss before starting with gamete transfer we are first going to discuss sexuality in organism that means there is a male carrying that is a male gamete carrying body there is a female gamete carrying body what are the terminologies that should be used for such gamete carrying bodies that is called as sexuality okay so first we are going to talk about the sexuality in lower organisms then we'll talk about sexuality in higher organisms and then we will come to the second event of sexual reproduction in pre fertilization that is gamete transmission chalo let's start today's class with lower organism lower organisms like algae and fungi beta whenever the terminology used is lower fungi that means we are actually talking about we are actually talking about algae and fungi correct so lower organisms like algae and fungi in them to represent the sexuality two terminologies are used homothallic and heterothallic as their body are haploid thallus like undifferentiated homo means same so if both the gametes that is male and female are coming from the same body so such bodies of algae and fungi are called as homothallic and if the gametes are come coming from two different thallus then it is known as heterothallic correct shall i write the point chalo in lower organisms like algae and fungi if gametes are produced from the same body from the same thallus like body right then it is known as homothallic body homothallism whereas like in case of rhizopus it's one of the fungus gametes are coming from two different thallae one thallae is responsible for producing male gamete and another thallae is responsible for producing female gamete in that case if gametes are produced from 
टू डिफरेंट थैलाए दैट मीन्स वन अ मेल थैलाए एंड अनदर अ फीमेल थैलस then this condition is known as hetero then the sexuality term we use is heterothalism right have you understood that what are the two terminologies which are used to determine sexuality in lower organisms similarly if we talk about sexuality in higher organism students then the terminology used is monoecious dioecious bisexuality unisexuality right chalo let's try to understand that as well in higher organisms beta like your angiosperms gymnosperms correct so specifically higher organism which i am going to consider over here is angiosperms now you know angiosperms they are flowering plants they produce a specific sex organ for reproduction that is flowers now suppose a flower is having both the sex organ that is male reproductive organ as well as female reproductive organ such that one flower is itself producing both the gametes male and female then that condition is known as bisexual why because one plant body is having the sex organ which is capable of producing both the gametes so one terminology is used in higher organism is bisexuality bisexuality means what bisexuality means that there is one sex organ in which both the gametes are produced for example like china rose so what is the condition in china rose there is one flower right which is having both the sex organ the male sex organ as well as the female sex organ this is the female sex organ which is known as gynoecium and this is the male sex organ which is known as androecium getting my point so this is bisexuality contrary to bisexuality beta is unisexuality unisexuality means one flower producing only one gamete either male or female so a flower capable of producing male gamete are known as staminate flowers whereas flowers capable of producing female gamete having gynoecium having pistil are known as pistillate flowers right so what is unisexuality when two different flowers or you can write when both the sex organs that is androecium and gynoecium are born on different flowers are born on different flowers that means staminate flower which is having active male sex organ which is androecium also called as stamen so staminate second is pistillate pistillate means beta the flowers which have active female sex organ that is also known as pistil so there the term comes pistillate correct yes or no have you understood till here okay now beta these two flowers the staminate and pistillate flower are unisexual correct now they can be born on the same plant or on different plant but of the same species therefore unisexuality can further be divided into two conditions that is monoecious unisexual or dioecious unisexual plants 
so unisexuality can be further divided into monoecious and dioecious what is monoecious unisexual and what is dioecious unisexual condition let's try to understand okay so i will need a page or uh, right or i'll just try to write it over here beta some plants like cucurbits and your maize monocots they are unisexual but they show monoecious condition what is monoecious condition c monoecious condition means plant is same plant body is same having both the flowers staminate and pistillate so sex organs are different same flower both the sex organs are not present so bisexual condition is absent flowers are different however born on the same plant both staminate and pistillate flowers are born on the same plant then this condition is known as monoecious condition contrary to this my dear student is dioecious condition what is dioecious condition when male and female flower are different born on different plant body of same species like for example in date palm papaya you all must have seen papaya plants which are very common almost every two third and sec fourth home there is a papaya plant but there are two papaya plants one male papaya another female papaya as papaya is a dioecious plant correct so there is one male and there is another plant having female flowers got my point what do you mean by monoecious and dioecious so let me write examples over here for monoecious you can learn examples like cucurbits coconut maize for dioecious you can remember example of date palm papaya clear yes or no now beta these are the terminologies which are used to determine sexuality in higher organisms now there are some lower organisms also like marchantia cara these are lower organisms still the terminology used to determine their sexuality is same as that of higher organisms cara is a algae algae is a lower group of organism so sexuality terminology used should be either homothallic or heterothallic but for cara terminologies used are unisexual monoecious dioecious similar goes for marchantia as well marchantia is a bryo marchantia is a bryophyte bryophyte are also lower organisms only but still terminology used to determine their sexuality is monoecious or dioecious so now we are going to see the exceptions that is lower organisms whose terminologies are not homo or heterothallic rather terminology used is unisexual bisexual and so on correct chalo so now let's check out the structure of cara which is green algae right terminology used is monoecious they are unisexual their male and female sex organs are different but they are born on the same body so terminology actually should be homothallic but we use terminology as monoecious okay normally beta if you remember we say that algae sex organs are non jacketed may be unicellular or multicellular but in case of cara sex organs are jacketed they are protected by a layer of sterile jacket cells and they are exclusively multicellular so next point what are you going to write for cara 
sex organs are multicellular and jacketed the terminology used for male sex organ is globule because it is spherical in shape whereas terminology used for female sex organ is nucule which is protected by five cap cells or coronary cells okay chalo now let's try to see the structure of cara so basically cara is a green algae and it bears both the sex organs on the same body they are different so condition is unisexuality in unisexuality condition is monoecious the male sex organ is multicellular jacketed called globule and female sex organ in cara is also multicellular jacketed called nucule both the sex organs beta they are born on the abaxial surface of a short lateral branch i'll show you with the help of the diagram but first let me write this point both the sex organs are born abaxially abaxially means on the lower side of a short lateral branch are born abaxially on a short lateral branch now i'll show this with the help of a diagram so let me choose a green pen suppose this is a cara this is how cara is actually it's a multicellular green algae okay these are the short lateral branches which you see these are the short lateral branches of the cara now on a abaxial surface that means on lower surface both the sex organs are attached on short lateral on these lateral branches now beta i should draw both the sex organ on the lower side but to but to give you a proper appearance what we do we place both the sex organs one above and other on the lower side but you should remember both the sex organs are present on the lower side itself just to make more clarity sex organs are drawn in such a manner like this this is the nucule which is your female sex organ protected by five celled tube cells five celled jacket called tube cell so five cells let me draw 1 2 3 4 and 5 so it is protected by five celled jacket correct on the lower side is present a spherical globule which is the male sex organ it is beta protected by eight celled jacket called shield cells so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so these are eight celled jacket this is how the sex organs are placed in cara both on short lateral branch abaxially but diagrammatically we represent them like this clear to everybody yes or no now one more point i would like to tell you for cara beta cara they have both the sex organs on the same body that means they can show self fertilization they will themselves produce their male gamete from here and then female gamete is produced in nucule they can perform self fertilization but even after having monoecious condition 
Cara do not show self fertilization as in them male gametes they mature first. Male gametes they come out first, and meanwhile female gamete is not yet ready. So male gametes say, "I cannot wait for the female gamete. I'll go out in search of other cara having mature female gamete." Therefore, cara. even after having monoecious condition shows cross fertilization due to protandrous condition clear so what are we going to write the next point cara shows protandry protandry means beta what the male sex organ is going to mature first than female hence shows cross fertilization hence shows cross fertilization understood or not the male gametes are motile they are biflagellated they will be discharged in the water then they will swim in water in search of female gamete which is going to be of another cara that means they show cross fertilization but not self fertilization due to protandrous condition mark this as very important point so this much you have to remember for cara that cara first of all it's a green algae uh, sorry it's a lower organism but still terminology used is unisexuality monoecious condition because they have slightly developed sex organ as compared to other algal members their male sex organ is protected by a layer of jacket they are multi celled called globule female sex organ is nucule they show protandrous condition due to which they promote cross fertilization but not self fertilization i hope things are clear till here now second exception is marchensia marchensia beta it is a member of bryophyte what is marchensia marchensia is a liverwort it is a primitive bryophyte which is also considered as a lower organism but still after being lower organism terminology used is not homo or heterothallic rather marchensia shows dioecious condition in in unisexual uh, in unisexuality they show which condition dioecious like cara are monoecious these marchensia they are dioecious now body is thallus like only there are two different thallus one is male thallus another is female thallus male thallus produces male sex organ that is anthridium and female thallus produces female sex organ which is archegonium getting my point so there are two different thallae one producing male gamete another producing female gamete hence condition is dioecious two different bodies here monoecious because one body both the sex organ here dioecious because two different body two different sex organ right so this is your anthridium which is actually the male sex organ and this is archegonium beta which is female sex organ same concept you study well in class 11th while you study the chapter plant kingdom so i'm not going to tell you much detail on marchensia as i did for cara because cara is new but not marchensia yes you all study marchensia in detail in your class 11th chapter plant kingdom how many says yes if you say yes then please write it in the comment section that ma'am yes we know the details of marchensia 
and yes we have studied in class 11th in the chapter plant kingdom right okay so this much is there for unisexuality and bisexuality and sexuality overall now first step of pre fertilization gamete formation is done moving ahead with the second event of pre fertilization that is gamete transmission very important so go back gamete transfer gamete transfer is the second event of pre fertilization second event of pre fertilization after gamete formation after gamete formation in lower organisms like algae and fungi beta majority of them they transfer gametes with the help of water male gametes and female gametes they are discharged from the main body they come in the water and then gametes are uh, they are meeting to each other and they are showing fertilization even in lower organisms like bryophytes and in some pteridophytes also water is the medium for the transmission of male gamete but as the organisms they mature like towards evolution if you talk about gymnosperms and angiosperms wind and other insects are used for the transmission of gametes and this is known as pollination correct so lower organisms they use water for transmission so let's write the first point lower organisms like majority of algae fungi and bryophytes yes use water for the transmission of gametes for the transmission of gametes however when we talk about higher organisms like gymnosperms and angiosperms the the mechanism of the transmission of gamete is known as pollination which is usually done with the help of wind or biotic agents like insects and other living organisms water is very very restricted higher organisms do not prefer transmission of gametes through water this is one of the evolution uh, which is shown in the transmission of gametes that means evolution did not prefer water for transmission hence the topmost organisms do they do not prefer water for transmission of gametes so next point which you are going to write in this higher organisms use wind or other biotic agents we'll discuss this in detail in our next chapter which is sexual reproduction in plants so other biotic agents for transmission of gametes this mechanism is known as pollination and what are those higher organisms like gymno and angiosperms clear to everybody now gamete formation is done transmission is done now what is the next event fertilization so next step is syngamy fusion of male and female gamete so now let's talk about the second step very important step that is fertilization it is one of the vital step that is fusion of gamete suppose transmission took place gamete ban gaye transmission is done but if they are not fusing if they are not meeting each other then what is the point of forming gamete and transmitting them so this is a very vital phenomena of the entire sexual reproduction process that is meeting of the gametes syngamy fertilization is also known as syngamy what is syngamy fusion of two haploid cells that is fusion of male gamete and female 
गैमीट टू फॉर्म अ डिप्लॉइड सेल दैट इज जायगोट right it is a very crucial step if this does not take place then first all steps are waste now fertilization can be of two types external fertilization internal fertilization bachcho if i talk about external fertilization i mean to say that fusion of gamete is taking place outside the body outside the female body internal fertilization means that fusion of gametes are taking place inside the female body like in humans we have internal fertilization male gamete is discharged within the female body and then fertilization takes place but in lower organisms like majority of algae and fungi fertilization is external in the water both male and female gamete are discharged at the same time synchrony is very very important then they swim towards each other they fuse and then they form the zygote correct so what is external fertilization external fertilization means formation of zygote that is fertilization outside the body in the environment correct here internal fertilization fusion of gamete inside the female body or you you know fusion of gamete has to be always inside the female body because eggs are non motile female gametes are non motile they don't move anywhere male gamete has to come to the female gamete right so fusion of gametes within the female body first point second point beta in external fertilization synchrony the time of the release of both the gametes is very very important it should not happen that okay male gamete is discharged two days back and now the female gamete is coming then how will they meet they will only meet when both the gametes are discharged at the same time so here synchrony in the release of gamete is important both male and female is important but here for internal fertilization synchrony is not that much required let male gamete come out of the male body female gamete is already there now male gamete will come suppose two days back male gametes are discharged from the male body now suppose that male gamete is taking for example 2 days to reach the female body like in bryo and teredo gymno angio so female gamete has two more days to prepare itself so synchrony in internal fertilization is not required no synchrony required right third point of difference now beta in case of external fertilization students since zygote is produced outside in the environmental condition therefore zygote is more vulnerable to predators any time any fish and any other organism can come and eat that zygote so zygote in case of external fertilization are very vulnerable to predators but in case of internal fertilization no such vulnerability because they are well protected inside the female body correct so third point in external fertilization zygote are vulnerable to predators as they are outside the female body here no such vulnerability because they are well protected inside the female body yes or no next difference beta in external fertilization since zygote are produced in uh, outside the body under ex external environmental conditions so zygote need to protect itself 
Now there is no female body to protect zygote. So zygote knows nobody is there to protect me. I have to protect myself from any kind of harsh climatic conditions. Therefore zygote in them is thick walled. Thick wall will protect the internal material of zygote from any kind of external harsh environmental conditions. But in case of internal fertilization, zygote is usually thin walled because it does not require thick wall. It does not require any self protection because female body over here is already protecting the zygote. Correct? Yes or no? Very good. So now let's write. In external fertilization, zygote are thick walled as they need protection by themselves. But in internal fertilization, bacho, zygote are thin walled. I hope you have understood all the points of difference. Now, let me write the examples. Internal fertilization, I am only talking about plants, right? So, internal fertilization takes place in bryophytes, in pteridophytes, in gymnosperms and in angiosperms. But if I talk about external fertilization, then it is seen in majority of algae and fungi. Some algae, some fungi can also show internal fertilization, but majority, not all exceptions are always there. So, majority of algae and fungi. Majority of algae and fungi, beta, they show external fertilization. All bryo, pterido, gymno, angio, few algae and fungi shows internal fertilization. Now you have to decide which is better. So in my comment section, I want all the students to write that which fertilization according to you is better, external or internal. Let me see how many of you listen to the lecture properly in a sequence manner without skipping the topics, right? So please students, please, this batch is not launched for fun's sake. This batch is being specially launched to teach you, to guide you for your NEET examination. So those whoever students are really worried about their NEET exams, they really want to study from this batch, you can and please take this opportunity, grab this opportunity. Every one do not get such opportunity but due to physics wala you are getting this opportunity to study from some elite class of teachers who are actually teaching you all the little bit details of every topic which can come in any way in your neat examination so beta please please grab this opportunity take the classes seriously spread it with your friends tell them also that okay, I am doing this, you can also join me, you can also study well, okay? And you know it's completely free of cost, so just grab this opportunity, why are you waiting for? Take these classes seriously, they are not just meant for the sake of fun, they are meant for your success. Excellence itself means when you are doing something excellent. And so please, you are a student of excellent batch, so please try to be best, try to give some excellent results, yes or no. Okay, so in the comment section, you're going to write and tell me that which fertilization scheme according to you is better and why, please answer why as well. Okay, moving ahead with the last topic of the chapter, fertilization is done, post fertilization events, that is two zygote formation of what will happen. After fertilization, once male and female gamete diffuse, what will happen? Obviously, zygote will be produced. So, post-fertilization events include zygote formation and then this zygote leads to the development of embryo. So, two events in post-fertilization are zygote formation and embryogenesis. So, first see this. Zygote beta is a first deployed 
सेल फॉर्म्ड आफ्टर फर्टिलाइजेशन सो वॉट इज जाइगोट जाइगोट इज अ फर्स्ट डिप्लॉइड सेल फॉर्म्ड आफ्टर फर्टिलाइजेशन ओके टू रिप्रेजेंट द न्यू जेनरेशन सो वी कैन ऑल्सो से दैट जाइगोट इज अ कनेक्टिंग लिंक बिटवीन टू जेनरेशन सक्सेसिव जेनरेशन यू योर पेरेंट्स एंड यू आर एक्चुअली कनेक्टेड थ्रू जाइगोट ओनली ना द गैमीज विच वर प्रोड्यूस बाय योर पेरेंट्स fertilized to produce the first cell of your body which is the first cell of your body students zygote right that was produced by the fertilization of male and female gamete so that is why zygote is a first diploid cell of the new generation formed after fertilization hence it is also the connecting link between two successive generations yes or no am i correct yes ma'am very good next point zygote may be externally produced if external fertilization is taking place there it has to be thick walled or if it is internally produced during internal fertilization then there it is thin walled those points i have written i am not going to write further okay now in lower organisms like algae and fungi beta zygote soon after formation undergoes reduction division thus no embryo formation takes place otherwise in all other organisms bryoterido gymno angio soon after zygote is produced it undergoes mitosis to first produce a multicelled embryo so you are going to write the next point as in lower organisms like majority of algae and all fungi zygote shows reduction division shows meiosis does no embryo in them correct however in higher organisms like bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms beta zygote shows mitosis and thus leads to the formation of next step of pre fertilization that is embryogenesis embryogenesis is also known as progenitor of next generation the birth giver of next generation right it is not produced in algae and fungi see i have already written this point lower organisms like algae and fungi in them no embryo is produced so no embryo formation in lower organisms because their zygote undergoes meiosis but if i talk about higher organisms or bryo bryophytes onward there is formation of embryo from a diploid cell zygote this diploid cell zygote undergoes repeated mitosis to produce a multicelled diploid structure all these cells beta they are diploid so a multicelled diploid structure called embryo right now this embryo will further undergo mitosis more mitosis will take place more new cells will be added along with the formation of new cells there will be differentiation also some cells will differentiate to function like root some cells will get differentiate to function like stem so this is also known as morphogenesis so after embryogenesis comes morphogenesis formation of 
morphological features like root stems and leaves and how this will happen first embryo is produced now this embryo will further undergo mitosis more new cells will be added some cells will lose the capacity of division they will become mature they will become differentiate to start performing function like root formation stem formation leaf formation etc so further mitosis and differentiation will lead to formation of new organs morphological features this is known as morphogenesis that is formation of external features like root stems leaves etc clear to everybody yes or no what is morphogenesis how morphogenesis takes place you well study in your zoology uh, but not for plants there you study for humans that zygote is there embryo is produced and embryo that divides further to form all those grastrula blastula and so many stages then some cells specialize to form brain some cells specialize to form kidney and so on and then ultimately fetus and then your child is born similar is in plants also zygote embryo further division further differentiation morphogenesis plant body is produced correct now in this case embryos beta they are well protected by ovule then they are well protected by ovule that transforms into seed then ovary wall which transforms into fruit all those topic i will take in my next chapter which is sexual reproduction in flowering plants for this chapter keep it till here only and this marks the end of your first chapter i hope you all have understood this chapter well so now some questions are there that you know the trend are given as homework hope you are doing these homework very seriously yes or no please students take homework very seriously do not consider that okay it's a youtube class recorded class who's going to check no be the teacher of your own self you are your own teacher think that if i am not going to do today so i myself will scold to me only getting my point so try to be your own teacher try to be your own guide you all are big enough now nobody is going to come and tap on your head that okay study 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 no this is not the way you are no more nursery or class 1 student who needs a mummy or papa or a teacher to tap and to force you to study you are big enough you are smart enough to understand the importance of time and to understand the importance of career so if you really think that career is important and you really want to make career in the field of medical then this is the best platform in which you are so take the opportunity as a serious thing and start working hard do not these do not take these classes in a fun way this is the only message which i am going to give you and yes with this we come to the end of our first chapter soon we are going to start a second chapter till then bye bye take care